Welcome to the Focus on Why podcast. I'm Amy Rowlandson and I ask my guests one simple question, why? Focusing on the importance of why, I share with you the relatable, uplifting and inspiring conversations I have with people from all walks of life. This podcast will encourage you to focus on your why to enable and empower you to achieve the success you desire. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why. Before we get started, are you thinking of creating a podcast or are you a podcast host already? As a podcast strategist, I can help you to launch or relaunch a purposeful and profitable podcast, which will inspire, entertain and educate a global audience. Simply book in a one-to-one call with me right now via the Calendly link in the show notes and together we'll focus on the purpose of your podcast. Today on Focus on Why, I am joined by Abigail Langridge. Welcome, Abigail. How are you? I'm really well, Amy. It's been really, really lovely for you to invite me onto your show today. Looking forward to our chat. Indeed. And we've known each other for a while in different circles from the property world a million years ago. It seems Mm -hmm. to be that we were all able to go out and do network events. But I've invited you here to talk about your why, your purpose. So let's just dive straight in and ask you, what is it you're doing at the moment? Um, At the moment, I am building a team of other Poppins PAs or smaller me's, if you like, to carry on my vision, really. Um, And that's really organically grown because I left corporate life being a legal PA um, back in 20. 17 and it's just grown from there from not knowing what on earth I'm doing (laughs) and then finding my niche probably around three years ago three four years ago probably about six months before COVID hit actually I'd really found my place in what I really thrive in doing and found that it was high achieving women that are not a million miles away from where I am personally or in a professional sense And I created what is Poppins PA today. So that is, in essence, basically, it's the organising of the PA side, which everyone knows of a PA, but it's taking it that step further because it's what I needed as a person um, who's got three children, a husband and a dog and all the other plates that go with that. And I wanted to give my clients the support that they needed past the administration of life. Now, that's not necessarily the administration of their professional lives it's in their personal lives because I find that of the high achieving dynamic of that that kind of person where they're CEOs COOs you know they've got fingers in lots of pies and they actually love doing that they love working 15 hours plus a day they didn't have a personal life to turn to and then from there comes burnout, comes problems in the relationship, you know, the the mum guilt thing with the children. And it was that support that I really, really wanted to hone in on. And that's exactly what Hoppins PA provides. It really alleviates that, that noise between their ears of all that stuff that keeps them awake at night. That's the stuff that interrupts them during the day. Yeah, that's, so that's, I mean, that's, you know, quite a large nutshell, but that's what I'm building Um, So I've got a team of three, four, including me now, um, because it's a very, very involved role where there's it's just one PA dedicated to a client. And then it's all the other things that come with the running of the business. So it's having doing my own SOPs, the standard operating procedures and making sure that every client's happy, every associate that works with me is also happy. I'm really conscientious that. The girls that work with me are also getting not job satisfaction because they're freelance, but in it's the same kind of thing. And they do. They really love the lifestyle side. Um, you know, you know, we, we remind our clients we're almost like their work mum. You know, it's reminding them what to put in their bag almost the day before work or definitely reminding them of World Book Day. Because I think that haunts everyone that's a parent that kind of thing. I mean, at the moment, I've reminded a couple of ladies this morning that the Platinum Jubilee is bringing some interesting events within schools coming up. So just to keep on top of their school emails, or sometimes we actually keep keep on top of their school emails for them. And then we'll be texting them a week ahead. Did you sort out that outfit, you know, et cetera, just so that things stay in their radar and the sheer alleviation of stress 
from that is huge. And I know that I I have that. I have my own VA now, which again brought about a whole separate <laughs> um lots of issues because I am a PA and my brain told me lots that I'm a PA and I shouldn't have my own PA, my VA because I should be able to do it all myself. So yes, the whole mindset concept behind running a business and obviously delivering the service that I want to is all just a learning curve really but I am I do remind myself to try and enjoy it as I go because there's no there's no finish line really is there because when you get to one place you then set a new goal and then you just keep going because never in a million years did I think that I'd have a team of like four of us and I'd have nine clients overall in a business because I've effectively I've really really remolded the PA role I don't, a lot of people call us VAs because we are remote, um, but being remote is the only similarity between us and VAs. Everything else we do is completely different to the role of a VA um, because we are so immersed in our clients' lives, but that is the entire purpose of it because I know how much support we need because it's, we like to say yes as, as humans and even coming out this side of COVID, we're busier than we've ever been you know we're either making up for lost time or we're just enjoying being out and doing social things again we all love working again because we get the choice of working from home or back in an office co-working or whatever and we're all saying yes to everything which is great but we're never at the top of our own to-do list just quickly I'll touch on that I reframed that a little while ago to a to you list because we're never on our own to-do list um and I reframed it and I called it a to you list for that reason, because we should be on our own, to, you know, our own list. And one of the things that we do with clients is that we schedule time for them as humans. So not with their children or going shopping or anything like that, just as them. So whether that's 10 minutes, an hour, whatever it is that works with their diary, it's 10 minutes of them being them, whether that reading a book. And we work with them to actually find out what they enjoy doing because some people haven't had their own time for years so yes I could go for what I could do war and peace Amy so I'll let you let you cut in <laughs> honestly it's, it's fantastic and, and I wish I'd known about you when I was working and and in the times when I was trying to do that crazy juggle with the the dog and the husband and the children and all the other plates as you say because when you're supporting a high achieving woman in a workplace, actually, you know, it doesn't even have to be a high achieving woman, any women in the workplace, there are so many different aspects to the role that come with being a mother, with being a, an all round, I'm going to say superwoman, but actually the superwoman is a role that I have recently learned is not a good person to aspire to be. Absolutely. Because it's, it's not supporting ourselves. It's not looking after ourselves. And actually, it's, it's nurturing the other roles in our life. And as you say, focusing on the, you first and then allowing all of the other plates to spin, but having that support network to do it. And there's something that I heard somebody say, which was, if you're going to enable women to lead in this world, you have to support their entire life, not just their work life. That is absolutely hitting the nail on the head. And that is exactly why I come at the PA role the way I do from a personal side first, because with all the clients, there's always that work overspill into what we do. And we support that and we capture it. We have full on diary management because, again, without being in their diaries, we're never going to know where they are to book the personal stuff if we don't know what meetings they're at, et cetera. Um, but it's also I mean, what a new client is we're supporting her with um, actually learning how to diary manage because a lot of that stuff isn't in her diary. She carries it all in her head. So you look at her diary and you think, well, what's she moaning about? She's not doing anything. <laughs> but in her head, um, she's a lawyer, so she's got you know prep time, dra- you know all that kind of thing, drafting, and she knows where she needs to be. But actually, she's not factoring in you know lunch. It sounds ridiculous, but, you know, not factoring in lunch and things like that is it's giving you structure for your day. So I'll always try and work with the clients. So, right, OK, we're going to give like 12, 1230, just half an hour. Leave your phone at your laptop and just walk away. So it's just really sort of hand holding them over a matter of weeks. And then sometimes I'll message them and say, 
are you at your laptop? I know I can almost feel that you've opened your laptop and that you've brought your sandwich back to it and just, you know, you're just going to look at emails, go away, you know, and it's just that kind of gentle nudging and banter between us that builds up that rapport and, all, you know, crucially that trust that makes the role work. Um, and again, it, we don't always provide full-time support. A lot of people think, oh, I don't need a PA and they instantly think it's got to be full-time nine to five, Monday to Friday. It doesn't, it's far from it. Some clients only have us for around 20 hours a month, which is around half an hour, 40 minutes a day. Not that it's used like that. You can use it as and when, but it's just that gentle inlet of having that support, almost like a, a sort of wing woman, if you like. Um, and then it can build over time. It's, it's really such a simple process. And I try and say to new clients, don't overthink it. We're there for us if you need us. But if you go quiet, we will take the lead and say, right, let's have a catch up. Let's bring your diary up. Because again, with new clients, if they've not had a PA before, it's quite a, that whole delegation, it's quite new. They don't know what to give you. They're so in, you know, well, most of us actually are so used to doing things ourselves that they think, well, what are we going to give you? Um, but we, we coax things out of you. And again, bringing up your diary, you know, really opens the floodgates because everyone's got things going on regardless of what they are. Um, and then you, we go through them together and then we say, right, well, these are the things that are going on in the next two weeks. We can take at least 70% of that. And then all of a sudden, there's that time that's freed up and we'll say, right, well, now we're doing this. You've not, you've now got time to take your dog for a walk like twice a week after lunch or something like that. So it's those snippets of time where people say, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. I mean, I, I was listening to a Tony Robbins uh, video this morning, actually, and he He's such a classic. Every phrase he says, you think, oh, that's so good. And he just pours out, doesn't he? And he said something along the lines of, if you don't have 10 minutes a day for yourself, then what kind of life are you leading? I mean, that, that, that wasn't exactly what he said, but was, exactly, 10 minutes a day. I mean, if you look at what you're doing across a day, you're probably spending a lot more than that, you know, waiting for the kettle to be boiled or, you know, making dinner or whatever it might be. Um, so we we try and creep in that time for you because I think once people start to actually dedicate time for themselves and reap the benefits, they then realise they see the flip side, um, and that's where their lives really start to change. Once they get that personal element back, they're relaxing into their work. They can prioritise better. They're you know they're a better leader. They're a better colleague. All that kind of thing is a much better flow when you start with yourself, and it's. We all know this stuff. We all know it. It's not rocket science. I'm not reinventing the wheel at all. But I think because of the way I approach it, and I'm using those skills that I've learned in London because I worked as a legal PA for 15 years um, with multiple lawyers at one in one go. Um, one particular guy who I work with, wonderful head of employment at a large law firm. Um, I used to deal with some of his personal stuff and realised then that that was what I really, really loved because it's what you could see that when he was asking me to do it, it lit him up. That's why he was at work. I mean, it was um, it was like a refurbishment of a Norfolk barn at the time that he was uh, rebuilding, but he was only at work so he could actually do that refurb. All the other stuff was just menial and it was just very daily chores and things. So to be able to provide that service for him made such a difference to his life and that to have that impact is incredible. So that's kind of, I've gone around the houses, <laughs> but, but yeah. <laughs> what I'm hearing, Abigail, is that you're not reinventing the wheel. What you're doing is helping people to reinvent themselves, to, to see who they really are and by starting with themselves and, and focusing on why. It's coming back to why are they working? What is it that they're spending their daytime doing so that they can then have their spare time, spare time, <laughs> their, li their life, their life, how they live their life and this with and who they're living their life for. And it is so easy to get sort of caught up in that melee of the busyness. And then you forget the whole purpose of, of why you're alive. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, stop living for the bank holidays and, you know, the cheering happy Friday kind of thing. It's it doesn't have to be happy Friday. You could have a happy Thursday or whatever because of the way you structure your life. You know, it's 
thankfully, because of COVID, we have got that flexibility or a large amount of us have got that flexibility where we can not necessarily work the nine to five and we can really kind of rejiggle our work. Um, and it's just about saying to people, look, we can support you with this. This is actually what we specialise in. Um, I mean, it's I mean, I'm not a qualified coach by any means, but it's kind of like a coach but in a PA form um, because it's not I mean, it's really far. It's not all about booking meetings and the real PA element. Of course, we do things like that, but it's a um, from a gatekeeper element. I mean, I'm thinking of one particular client who's my main one of my main clients. She'll say yes to pretty much everything. She's a COO of a very large construction company. And she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. She's just, she'll do, if she can help someone, she will. Um, and just on a bit of a tangent, but it's really relevant. Um, I went to her, one of her events that we've both been coordinating on Friday, which was fantastic. And the taxi driver that took me there was from Afghanistan. And he has, we were talking about, you know, where I'd been. And I said, I work with one of my clients in the construction agency, uh, construction world. And he said, oh, I've got a construction management degree. And he listed all these qualifications. He said, oh, I've applied to this company before and they wouldn't listen to me. And I said, well, look, email me. An incredibly lovely guy. Obviously, he told me about his family and all this kind of thing. He said, email me. I said, because the lady I work with, if she can help you, she will. Because there's been lots of instances where she's been in that position in an Uber or whatever, and someone's had a similar story. And she's actually got them work. Because it's, unfortunately, it, a, a lot of it comes down to who you know. It's a lot about community. And it's just when that one door opens, someone's life can completely change. Um, and he has emailed me. I've got his CV. And I will be talking to my client about him because he's got all the qualifications, but he admits that he hasn't got the experience. But it's that old classic catch-22 situation. So it's I try and be the same as my clients because they're all fantastic networkers and it's just about helping people and that that comes through with my role um, but going back to the gatekeeper element where she says yes to so many things 95 percent will come through me if she copies me in but then I'll actually challenge her on some of them and say well do you why why are you meeting this person what what do you want from it as much as I'm happy for you to book the meeting why because it's another hour it's another half an hour and, you know, she suffers from cold sores and unfortunately I've got one today. So it's not just booking the meeting. It's why we're booking that meeting. It's it, I will question clients. I won't always do what they want me to do. I will question them because that's why they're in that circle of that vicious circle, because they're already having meetings booked, not necessarily back to back. But it's they're not even thinking about why they're seeing that person. They come off a of Zoom or the meeting with no actual result. And then that works for the other person as well. What does the other person want to get out of it? Go into a meeting with, with intention. I love that. And I love the fact that you've got your own focus on why filter for everything that you're doing <laughs> on a daily basis. So let, let's just go back to that mo the moment where you said you're building the team and you, you, you said it's to carry on the vision. Mm. So when did the vision start and where does the vision want to take you? So my vision, I mean, I can see it as clear as day. Isn't it, isn't it so bizarre how some images just stay in your mind like clear postcards? Um, so this vision was me within a very short time after me giving birth to my third child, Edward, who's now seven. And something happened. I mean, you hear of those. I mean, you hear these stories all the time, Amy, but having the podcast focus on why. But it was that switch that just flicked. I laid there and just looked out on the glorious view of Medway um, out from the hospital and just thought, I knew something needed to change, knew it with absolutely crystal conviction that I wasn't going to carry on my corporate role and that I wanted to own something of my, of, of my own that I had built that I could alleviate my husband from his job because um, he works nights and shift work and everything like that and I'm I love earning money I absolutely love earning money I love working and I love to be that kind of role model for the children plus my husband's really good at cooking so <laughs> that's a bit of a driver as well so I'm looking I'd love to swap roles but my vision was to 
was just to leave London and just create something really different to what I was doing, but also using the fundamental skills of what I've built, of what I've learned over the last 15 years. Now, I remember sitting in um, various desks in London, not knowing what on earth I could do, instantly dismissing, actually, my current role as a PA, not knowing that down the line, actually, if I just tweaked it a bit, that that would be enough. And that I'd learned to trust my gut and just go with decisions that my body was actually telling me were best for me. And so my vision was to just leave my corporate role at the time, be around more for the children. I mean, it's a bit of a classic, obviously, you know, working more around the family, not paying out for childcare, because that's not the reason I had child children in the first place, but also to be at a to combine a career with a stay-at-home mum role, which is obviously quite an unheard of role, but that's what I wanted to achieve. And that's the life that I'm living because I do the school runs for all three of my children. I mean, my eldest is 16 now, but I still take him in um, and I'm still working. And it's, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a professional or I've not got it all mastered by any means but I make it work for me. I'm extremely open with all of my clients and people that I work with, that I have a family on my website, and I always talk about it because they're my why. I want my children to grow up knowing that I'm building the business around them in order for me to be with them, um, and that the business actually pays for quite a lot of the stuff that they would like. So it's it's really ticking a lot of the boxes and I found out that I'm incredibly ambitious. <laughs> I seem to be, uh, I seem to be a sort of playing myself down. I think when I was in the corporate world, because I think you can only grow so much because if you're, if those aspirations aren't really there within the corporate role that you're in, they tend to really die out when you're in, in a kind of barcoded kind of job. Um, but since I've been working for myself, obviously, obviously you know, Amy, I worked, within the property field for a little while, which I thoroughly enjoyed and I'd like to go back to at some point. Um, but it didn't work for me with the family. My family were very young at this stage. Um, and so I picked up and I thought, right, do you know what? I'm going to go back to what I know. And that's exactly what I did. And then I found working with women at the time. And then I found that these women had that, all that pattern. They were all suffering from the same problem, of which I suffer from because I've got the similar similar lives and that that the rest is kind of history and I've just I kind of tweak it as I go because it's every client's completely different um although I do I've done a lot of work on my ideal client and things like that um I do still work to that but it's tailored because as I say every client is completely different we all lead such different lives so I will always have the initial call with the new client because then I can tweak and I can I know exactly what kind of life they lead now. I've had that many calls to make quite educational guesses um, as to what kind of PA would work with them because I do take on, I've learned to take on PAs that play to my weaknesses, which again is a whole different mindset ball game. Yeah, and it's it's just a it's a whole learning curve, but it's just about riding the storm and then celebrating the small wins and just keep going. And that epiphany that you had looking out of the window across the, the Medway and after after having your third son, clear as you said, and as clear as day as a picture postcard, that vision that you're you're now pursuing, where is it going? What what's is, it, is there an end piece or is this a evolution? You, you said your family were your why. I mean, they they're, they're going to grow up. What's going to happen next? Mm. Um, so I would I would like to build, keep building the team, um, but I don't want a massive team because I th- I'm finding that, I mean, my team are wonderful and I love them, obviously, but I'm finding that managing the team is taking more time away from me doing what I love. But I actually like the business development side. I'm always drawn to business development. I love talking, having conversations like this meeting new people and actually introducing them to the concept that actually they should be the star of their own lives and presenting it in the way that I have um, from my own experiences and following the business development is my vision. So building the business and perhaps going into speaking, again, I don't know 
how that would work, but I have thought about speaking. I've never been on a well, I've been on a stage as a dancer a lot of quite a lot of times because I grew up I grew up as a ballet dancer. But to speak on stage is something that scares me, but also really excites me because not only just for potential clients, but also as other PAs to help them grow their skills. You know, I'm, I've made that transition from corporate to working to, for myself. So, yeah, I think speaking is definitely on the agenda. Not quite sure how it would work, but I know I know better not to worry about how <laughs> now. <laughs> and to alleviate my husband of his role at some point, that's definitely part of my vision. And is he supportive of that? Is he desperate to, to move forward as well? He's definitely supportive of him being alleviated from his role, yes. <laughs> Um, but you know, as is such a classic situation, that he is the breadwinner, and I'm not quite at that stage yet. And he's very, he's very sensible, and you know that's very good because I appear more to be a bit of a risk taker. Um, and you know, it's definitely on the agenda. Um, and also to travel, I'd like to travel with it. I'd like to introduce Poppins PA to more more places than just the UK I mean I know obviously the social media and things I've, I've got quite a good network in Australia but to actually go out and maybe speak in different countries that kind of thing I mean that's quite a grand vision but I know also that it could definitely come to fruition because of the way the way sometimes things work um so I am really ambitious with it because I've seen and I know personally the the benefit of working in the way that we support no, it's incredible. And as I said earlier, it was just uh, somebody that I've I've needed in my life and I can see how valuable this will be to so many people. What's the, uh, what's the downside of being an entrepreneurial mum? Is there one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there is definitely. Um, so quite often I'm, I'm, all my brain is always on. Um, and I think that goes for kind of any entrepreneur really, but obviously having the children as well oh, I miss things I'm I'm definitely one of the mums that sent their children in on the uniform when it's a non-uniform day I think we've all got that badge at some point um because my brain isn't always where it should be I'm still learning myself um I'm not going to be I'm not going to declare myself that you know because I run a business and that's what I deliver that I have com- I'm completely got it all sorted because I haven't um it's definitely still a learning curve for me but it's I'm in tune with it. I'm aware of it. And that's another reason why I took that step to get my own VA. And it's, I'm, I found out that I'm quite impatient as well. So if I want things to happen, I want them to happen really quickly. And if they're not happening quickly, why not? But then again, that's, that's the entrepreneurial journey as well. And because I'm doing this already with children, things are going to take a longer time than what it would have done if I'd have obviously started this pre-motherhood. But as I said, actually, I commented on a LinkedIn post last night with a contact. I think that's actually a blessing in disguise because should I have started this beforehand, I think I would have hit burnout myself. And that would have been completely ironic given what we do. So to start it now, well, I say start it now, I've been going for a couple of years um, because I started as a VA quite a few years ago now and I niched about three years ago having the children keeps me at a certain pace so it's like today um I'll be leaving home at quarter past three um and I'll be aware of what emails are going around and sometimes I will have to hop on my laptop or something but generally speaking I don't work between three and eight and even then if I have to work of an evening it's very rare very rare indeed um, so I'm only doing around five hours a day ish. I mean, if I do five hours solid work, that's a very busy day for me. But then that's the whole point. That is the absolute whole point. So yeah, it's tricky, but it's far better than working in London and doing the commute, picking up children from nurseries and all that kind of thing. And it's, I'm always there. I know what they're wearing. I know the mums and all that kind of thing. So it's thankfully I've got a very good memory. Aside from the aside from the day that my son went to school in his uniform, um, but in terms of parties and all that jazz, um, I'm quite good with things like that anyway. Because it's that's that's the social element. That's what I really thrive in, and that's um, that's what I really enjoy. So it, yeah, it's. I think my my answer to your question is 
the time in which it's going to take to build it is going to take much longer because I would, I'd prefer it to, I'd prefer to have like a team of 10 or something like that. But I think that's just my imposter syndrome and all those things kicking in because I'm perfectly happy as I am. I don't know what more joy 10 people would give me over four. Um, I think that's just, you know, you're always looking for the next thing, aren't you, actually? And just thinking, right, be grateful for where I am and the fact that I've got, I've got a team and I've got a business that's actually thriving. Um, and now it's just spending that time and just sharing, sharing the message, really, because that visibility is key. Because everyone I speak to always says, oh, my God, I need one of you. I mean, that is a classic, absolute classic. As soon as I say I'm a personal PA, I mean, we've got two hashtags, actually, which our clients have given us. It's a walking post-it note, which really says what we do on the tin. That captures it perfectly. Or an online Mary Poppins. Because the things that we have to pull out of our virtual bag are quite miraculous sometimes. I love that. I love that metaphor of pulling out the virtual bag because it is such a brilliant one. You know, bring out the hat stand, bring out everything that you need out of your fabulous carpet bag. Yeah. Abigail, it has been a pleasure hearing why you do what you do and hearing about the honest or you sharing the honest approach that you're taking as well. It's really refreshing to, to see that you're walking the walk and you're talking the talk and you're learning as you're going. And I wish you all the best with the business. It's amazing. How Thank can you. people reach out to you if they're thinking, I need a Mary Poppins. <laughs> I need a Poppins PA. I need a yeah. walking post-it note. <laughs> um, so I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, so you can just look me up on LinkedIn, Abigail Langridge. My website is www.poppins-pa.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm not overly active on Facebook, but I do have a page on there, Poppins PA as well, and Instagram. But again, if you want to find me, I'll be on LinkedIn. Magic. Well, that's where we should all be heading, and I'll put the details into the show notes. Thank you. Have you got some final words, Abigail? Um, my final words are, there's no rush. There is no, I've really, really learned that. There is no rush in whatever you're doing, job, business, mum, hood, whatever it is. Just enjoy where you are. And I know it sounds really cheesy and such a cliche, but time goes so fast as we've all experienced with COVID. It kind of feels like a surreal period that hasn't even happened. But my eldest turned 16 not long ago and he's got his GCSEs at starting a week. Um, And this is his last actual proper week at school. And it's such a surreal time because I remember his first day and all that, all those things. And it makes me realise that it doesn't matter what we're doing. You've got to enjoy the current moment because looking back, it's gone. It's gone. But if you can look back and go, do you know what? I remember sitting having a, having a cup of tea with them or like listening to their day. That stuff is absolute gold. So, yeah, there's, there's no rush is my final words. How has this conversation had an impact on you? What value have you received from tuning in? What are your reflections with actions? Please take a moment to leave me an Apple podcast or Spotify review sharing how Focus on Why has made a difference to you today. Remember, the conversation doesn't end here. To keep it going, simply connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook or Twitter or join the Focus on Why Facebook group. All the links are in the show notes. Have a purpose, have a plan, focus on why.